know, so between 2004 and the present, there wasn't a lot of explanation of what CHS was from. Now, there have been, again, studies that showed that a marked upregulation of the hypothalamic pituitary um, system. Um, so basically, stress responses. Now, you bet, if you're in pain and you're nauseated and vomiting, you got stress. But, I mean, this is really serious stress. Um, this isn't, you know, simple situation of, of vomiting a couple of times because of a virus. Um, people lose weight. Um, they get marked abnormalities uh, sometimes of electrolytes, you know, the mm -hmm. mineral balance in the blood. And there have actually been two deaths attributed to this because of how bad the vomiting was from CHS. Um, so, you know, there are certain markers, but until um, recently, we didn't have an explanation for this. Why does one person get it and another one doesn't? So this is the reason we wanted to examine it with the hypothesis that perhaps certain people have a genetic susceptibility to this. So that's what we wanted to test. Um, so uh, with Endocana Health, uh, we put together a study, uh, starting with a survey, again, of over 500 people. And um, we, for entry as a CHS patient, we had very strict criteria. We didn't want there to be mistakes. So first thing was, they had to carry a diagnosis of CHS. In other words, somebody had seen them and said that this was what it was. Um, then, additionally, they had to have active symptoms. We didn't want people in that may have been misdiagnosed as having CHS, but were okay now. In other words, they didn't really have it. Hmm. Um, so that whittled things down. Um, uh, we, um, we got it down to uh, uh, something like 200 candidates, and um, they were offered... Um, uh, genetic testing, which is done with a swab in the mouth um, to look at the DNA. Uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of attrition between step two and step three, uh, because only 28 CHS, confirmed CHS patients returned the kit after all of them had said that they wanted it. Hmm. Uh, the reason for that was we had a great deal of pushback from the CHS online community. There were people that questioned our motives, um, thought we were in this for the money, um, didn't like our methodology for one reason or another. And so there was an active movement to uh, tell people not to participate. Um, yeah. So that wasn't helpful. Um, and then we needed to compare them to, to somebody. So there were some people who took the survey that were high uh, volume cannabis users um, interestingly, about the same, four grams a day, who didn't have CHS symptoms and didn't have a diagnosis. So th those were the comparison groups. Um, what we found was a little surprising. So the first hypothesis was, well, there's got to be a problem with the CB1 gene, the gene that codes for the CB1 receptor. Um, we didn't see that. As mentioned previously, you do see that in uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome. So instantly we had a uh, uh, difference between the two syndromes. We also hypothesized two other things, that it could be a problem with the metabolism of THC, how it's broken down. We did get confirmation of that because there was a statistically significant difference in a mutation in a um, CYP2C9 gene between the CHS patients and the heavy users of cannabis that didn't have symptoms. So CYP2C9 is the um, enzyme in the liver that breaks down THC. So you might understand if there were a mutation there, perhaps that it wasn't as efficient in breaking down THC, that levels would be higher, and this could produce this funny reaction. Um, the third um, 
hypothesis that we had was that there would be an issue with the TRPV1, TRPV1 gene. We thought of that because one of the interesting things about CHS is that hot water exposure seems to help. And interestingly, something else that's hot application of capsaicin ointment on the skin, the active ingredient in chili peppers also temporarily relieves symptoms. Uh, that turned out to be the case too. Again, we saw a statistically significant difference uh, in the number of mutations seen in the CHS patients in the TRPV1 gene as compared to the high volume cannabis users without CHS. Um, so, uh, then there were a couple of things we hadn't uh, hypothesized. There were two genes related to dopamine metabolism with abnormalities. Uh, one was uh, for the gene that codes the dopamine type 2 uh, receptor. Um, this is an interesting uh, receptor in that it's the target for antipsychotic drugs. Um, and um, when people have a mutation there, as we saw in the CHS patients, they're at risk for a whole bunch of things. Um, addiction to other substances, um, also a risk for psychosis and other psychiatric issues to, to a strong degree, mm. uh, whether it be um, depression, anxiety, et cetera. There was also a mutation in what's called the COMT, catechol o methyltransferase gene. This is the gene that breaks down dopamine. Um, and again, if uh, there were a problem there, um, you might uh, get a buildup of dopamine that would um, provoke addictive uh, behavior or that kind of thing. Right. And then there was one, uh, that made sense though, because all of what we've mentioned so far um, sort of, um, it informs the symptomatology and phenomenology of CHS, meaning that it helps explain some of the symptoms. Um, uh, you know, uh, TRPV1, uh, among other things, has to do with propulsion in the gut. If things aren't moving, you will tend to vomit. Um, it also is in the brain and is associated with anxiety and pain. Um, so uh, things begin to make a lot more sense. But the fifth mutation that we saw was something we had not expected. Um, this is a gene called ABCA1. It has to do with cholesterol metabolism. And this one's a little ominous because people who have mutations on this gene may be susceptible to a number of problems later in life, specifically coronary artery disease, type two diabetes mellitus um, and Alzheimer's disease. So uh, we do not know yet um, because this hasn't been around yet. Our folks with CHS that have this mutation at greater risk for these disorders, the answer is quite possibly yes. So this takes on another dimension of public health uh, relevance that we really need to be examining. 